Now let us examine the second part of this topic, and this is exchange rate. So now let us look at that. Exchange rate is simply the price of one country's currency in terms of another country's currency. For example, how much is the worth of one US dollar in terms of Japanese yen or Chinese yuan or the euro? And whenever we look at foreign exchange or exchange rate, one of the things terms that often come up is depreciation or appreciation of currency. Now to understand appreciation and depreciation, let us look at the following example. Suppose in 2014, you could buy one euro for one dollar. And now in 2015, you can buy two euros for one dollar. Now look at the following. <clears throat> As compared to 2014, in 2015, you get more euros for the same dollar. Or in other words, euro has become less expensive or dollar has become more expensive in relation to the euros. So this movement from 2014 to 2015 from the US perspective will be called appreciation of the US dollar. Why? Because it has become more expensive in the world market or in relation to the euro. What has happened to the euro relative to the US? It has become less expensive and that is called depreciation. And here are the formal definitions of depreciation and appreciation. Once again, depreciation is when a currency loses its value or becomes less expensive in relation to another currency. What is appreciation? When a currency becomes more expensive in relation to another currency. So you should know appreciation and depreciation. Now let us see how exchange rate is determined in a free market situation. And when we look at the market situation, we have to consider demand and supply. And suppose we are looking at this from the perspective of the US. So world demand for the US dollar, where will this stem from? This will stem from demand for US exports because foreigners will have to pay in US dollars to purchase US goods. And then foreigners may also be interested in giving out loans to the US or investing in the US. Again, this will constitute a demand for US dollar. And how is the supply of US dollar determined? It is based on US imports. When you buy stuff from other countries, you will pay them in US dollars. And similarly, as far as the capital flows go, if the US is giving loans to other countries, it'll give them in dollars. Or if the US is investing in other countries, it'll do so in dollars. And so this will constitute the world supply of US dollars. So you should know what is constitutes demand for US dollars and what constitutes supply of US dollars. Now let us look at the typical demand and supply diagram. And now we are doing it for the US dollar. In the horizontal axis, we have amount of US dollars in the world market. And here we have Euro per US dollar. And then we have a demand curve for US dollars. And let us assume, as far as this diagram goes, that we are simply looking at the current account. So demand for US dollars will be simply exports of goods and services by the US. Then we have supply of dollars, and these will be supplied through imports of goods and services into the US. So you have these demand and supply curves. <clears throat> Now look at the following. Suppose you go up on the vertical axis. That means you are getting more and more euros per US dollars. And when you are getting more and more euros per US dollar, an upward movement like this will represent appreciation of the US dollar. <clears throat> 
if you are moving down as shown by the red arrow moving down on the vertical axis in such a case you are getting fewer euros per dollar that number is reducing or in other words what we have is the depreciation of the dollar so <clears throat> just remember an upward movement or when you're moving up the vertical axis it represents appreciation of the US dollar and when you're moving down the vertical axis it represents depreciation of the US dollar and we know where the demand and supply curves intersect we have an equilibrium you take this point to the vertical axis and you have determined equilibrium exchange rate between the US dollar and the euro and based on this you can bring this down and this will give us the stock of US dollars in the world market and this is how we determine equilibrium exchange rate on this slide I want to show what happens when the, ex the market is not in equilibrium suppose the exchange rate between the euro and the US dollar is this much when the exchange rate is this much you can figure out how much will be the demand for US dollars it will be less relative to supply of US dollars and so here we will have a surplus of US dollars in the world market now this situation of excess supply or where supply of US dollar is greater than demand for US dollar when will this happen look at the following the demand curve is based on the exports of US and the supply of dollars is based on imports of goods and services into the US or when supply exceeds demand of US dollars what this represents is a current account deficit for the US current account deficit for the US <clears throat> now look at the following compare this exchange rate at which we have current account deficit to the one we have at equilibrium and where we have no current account deficit or we have current account and balance so when you compare this to this what you find is you at this price you're getting more euros per dollar or in other words the US dollar is overvalued and when the US dollar is overvalued you are going to export less and you are going to import more and thus you will have a current account deficit so just remember when a currency is overvalued in the international market that market is likely to have a current account deficit and if you believe in the working of the market if the exchange rate starts to decrease or the US dollar starts to depreciate what will happen is eventually we'll hit equilibrium and we will wipe out the current account deficit so if a currency is overvalued and you have current account deficit maybe the country needs to let its currency depreciate so that the current account deficit can be wiped out now let us look at the opposite case and here look at this exchange rate and compare this to the equilibrium one and at this exchange rate what this means is your currency or the US dollar is undervalued and when the currency is undervalued the demand exceeds supply or what we have the way we had explained it in the previous slide what we are going to see is a current account surplus why because your exports of goods and services is greater than imports of goods and services 
And if you want to wipe out current account surplus, what has to happen is the currency has to move in an upward direction or the US dollar has to appreciate in relation to the euro to wipe out the current account surplus. So whenever we have disequilibrium situation, it simply tells us if you believe in this theory and that is either the currency is overvalued in the world market in that case we have a current account deficit and if it is undervalued we have a current account surplus what i have shown in the previous diagrams is that the exchange rate can move very easily in either direction it can change its value without any problems or what we have looked at is the case of flexible exchange rate now consider the following if the value of a currency changes very quickly this may create a lot of problems for people who are involved in foreign transactions if values of currencies change very quickly that means a lot more instability in the world economic system so as a policy what we would prefer is some kind of a fixed exchange rate so that exporters and importers know what at what rate will their currency be converted so from stability point of view fixed exchange rate is better now as far as the arrangements between different countries of the world go after world war ii imf or the international monetary fund was set up with its headquarters in washington dc and its main purpose had been has, or has been to look after affairs of balance of payments as well as exchange rate between countries international monetary fund now between 1945 to about early part of 1970s what we had was a system of fixed exchange rate and then it was given up and what we had was some kind of a flexible exchange rate during some part of the 1970s and that's when it was decided that we should have a mix of flexible and fixed exchange rate and what we have at present is called the managed float that is a currency can move in either direction within a well-defined band for example the currency value can change within plus minus five percent on a daily basis and that system is called managed float so it's a mix of flexible and fixed exchange rate so this is what we have at present and once again the international organization responsible for issues relating to balance of payments and exchange rate is international monetary fund or imf in short and this completes our discussion of this topic thanks a lot for your time